This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and now for something the same yet different. You remember Vio is back, not owned by Sony anymore, but run by some of the same folks at Sony who designed the Vios that we used to know and love. The Vio name is now owned by an independent Japanese company. We reviewed the Vio Z Canvas at the end of 2015, which was an amazing, actually, very portable tablet uh, with the quad-core CPU. Well, this is the Vio Z, known as the monster PC in Japan. In the previous generation, this is the latest generation with Intel Skylake inside, and you remember the, the Vio flip that was in the United States a year, year and a half ago we reviewed? It came in 13, 14, and 15 inches. Well, this is basically that design only with even more premium materials. It's a 13.3 inch laptop slash convertible with an Entrig active digitizer. You get the pen in the box and it has a 28 watt Skylake CPU. So that's the more powerful CPU we've all been waiting for. We've seen the Ultrabook U-series CPUs. This is the more powerful one that will also be in the upcoming MacBook Pro whenever Apple gets around to updating the MacBook Pro 13 inch with Retina display. Anyway, there's a lot of interesting stuff here. Beautiful aluminum chassis, carbon fiber on the bottom, 2.95 pounds, 0.66 inches thin. That's like 16.8 millimeters. It's expensive though. It's going to be $17.99 for the Core i5 base model and it goes all the way up to this maxed out model we have here which is $23.99. Is it worth it? Watch our video to find out. So here it is, premium product. Very pretty screen right here. We don't usually talk about the screen first, but why don't we? Because here it is in our face. QHD 2560 by 1440 display, IPS technology. Is it quantum dot is so-called? I imagine it probably is. It's a Shimei manufactured display. 275 nits of brightness. Now, and back in the days when Sony owned the Vio brand, they were never the brightest on the block, but they had real pretty screens that were just like, ooh, and uh, cinematic for watching video. Same thing going on here. It's not the brightest we've ever seen, but it's adequate right now. The studio lights are not making it pale out. 78% of Adobe RGB and 100% of sRGB, so great for color prof graphics professionals uh, in calibration was also pretty good out of the box too 770 to 1 contrast ratio pretty good black levels 0.36 at max brightness so just want to talk about that because it's a very pretty display good viewing angles on it not the widest you can see the lights are going to make it hard for us to show that to you but it's ips so you know it's pretty good but more interestingly, the Entrig pen, just like the Vio Z canvas that we reviewed, the same Entrig technology here, pretty late technology, up to date in other words, competitive with Surface Pro 4 and Surface Book. This is included in the box. If you buy one of these, it has this capability. And just like with the canvas, there's a little rubber grip you can put on the pen if you want to make it feel a little bit more ergonomic. It uses a quadruple A battery, and it's great for OneNote. It's also very good for art. But this is a laptop and an Intel Skylake latest generation laptop too. And most interestingly, this is the first that we've seen that is running the 28 watt platform. So this is the more powerful platform that we'll see coming up, like I said, in the 13 inch Retina MacBook Pro. Who knows who else will come up with one. Anyway, Apple's taking their time with that. And it, it, it's just a new CPU, Intel has just barely released. It has Intel Iris HD 550 graphics. However, none of our utilities can recognize it, and they keep saying it's a 540, which isn't possible. The 540 comes with 15 watt CPUs only. That's how the flipping mechanism works, and it clicks back in place. Those of you who have tested out the flip of all when it was made by Sony, the mechanism is even more solid, and that click into place is even better. Basically, Vio is premium now. That's all there is to it. So this thing is not cheap. The base model with the Core i5 is $17.99. We have the top of the line model that's $23.99. The base model has Core i5. It's still 28 watt. The 1999 and the 2399 models have the Core i7. And that's a 3.3 gigahertz Core i7-6567U. Dual core CPU again. Once again, 28 watts. That's so unusual we're going to say it. 256 gig PCIe NVMe SSD drives in the bottom two configurations. The top of the line model has a 512. The bottom two have 8 gigs of RAM. The top one has 16 gigs of RAM. That's soldered on board on this. I know some of the old flips had a RAM slot. This one does not. In fact, like the older flips, this is not the easiest thing to open up. There's a, quite a few Phillips head screws that hold this on. There's more screws underneath the rubber 
foot over here and then you kind of have to work it and pry it off to get the bottom off so you could get to the wireless card which i assume is socketed and you can get to the battery now i say assume usually i open these up for you guys but because this is prototype 001 that we have here you can see the not for sale stickers and all that we didn't get to have it for a very long time they asked me not to perform surgery on it the bottom is inset over here again just like the the flip of old it's a unique looking look this is carbon fiber here everything else is aluminum there's our speakers right there some ventilation the rear camera megapixel camera you also have a front webcam on it and notice it says very teeny here but it is made in japan just like the premium bios of old well now all bios are made in japan for those of you who are really into that as an indication of quality in terms of ports, we have a HDMI port here, an SD card slot that is the charging port. It has a weird kind of barrel connector that just kind of feels like you're jamming it in there when you charge it, but well, that is what it is. Compact, typical Ultrabook charger comes with it. And two USB 3.0 ports over here. One of them can do sleep and charging, so not a huge number of ports there. That's your power button right there, and it's, it's more firm and more pleasing to use, shall we say, than the Sony vio flips that we knew from a couple of years ago which were less expensive so here's what happens when they don't cut corners to bring something in at a mainstream price all sorts of little touches like there's little feet right over there so when you're flipping it and resting on there's little clear plastic or plastic feet support it volume control there in case you're using it as a tablet of course it has a headphone jack too so all in all well made very pretty doesn't show fingerprints too much either nice imprinted vio logo right there 2.95 pounds it's pretty darn light especially for something running on a more powerful cpu and integrated gpu that gt3e gpu inside is pretty powerful in fact in our benchmarks this is benchmarking in terms of gpu performance about as fast as surface book with its uh, roughly nvidia 940m graphics equivalent card and there's some this bodes well for Intel integrated graphics at the high end for the 28 watt line. All right, what are these other little doodads back here? <laughs> you get a HDMI to VGA adapter in the box. Business users who have to use uh, legacy projectors and things like that and monitors will appreciate that. The high end model of this, the, the 2399 model, comes with this. Sony has done this before. It's a little access point, the idea is, turns your laptop into an access point and it has an Ethernet port. However, you're going to need a cable adapter and that wasn't in our box hopefully it will be when this actually ships i don't know because there's a lip on the edge and this has been the story with the flips this lip sticks up and sticks out a little bit so this actually can't go all the way in oh, oh well now that we're looking at the keyboard here the keyboard does not have a huge amount of travel this is pretty skinny however it is improved again over the flip which was not my most favorite typing experience to say the least short travel but they worked hard to give this keyboard a very good feel the key damping the key travel is very even tactile feedback is good they have an anti fingerprint coating even on the keys but uh, besides the fact it doesn't show fingerprints which is nice is it's kind of nice it's just grippy enough but not too grippy it's sort of like your perfect keyboard key texture here uh, much as I don't like the feel of the short travel on the keys, I found that I typed very well on it, so it, it didn't cause me problems. No flex there. This is extremely rigid keyboard deck here. The trackpad is pretty good. It's not among the very best. You know, Windows 10 has raised the bar lately with the Skylink generation, but it's pretty good. I haven't had trouble controlling things or accidentally moved files I didn't intend to move or anything like that just not quite my favorite but it's not bad and it has a slightly rough texture which they did by choice this is actually a mica coating on top to give it that sort of texture so some people like the super slick ones i usually don't i actually do prefer a little bit of texture so that's what it has once again an embossed vio logo over here and this is a backlit keyboard backlights in white and to do the flippy thing, there's a release right over here. So anytime you want to flip it, this avoids having the keys facing out. That's the idea here. So you can put it in presentation mode. And it's, you know, the, the Sony flip models have held up pretty well, despite the fact this looks like it could be a very precarious kind of way to do things. So you can use it in presentation mode. In theory, you could prop it up in tent mode too, couldn't you? And obviously you can use it in tablet mode, which brings up the pen again. 
like the Vio-Z canvas that we reviewed, uh, this has the Intrigue pen and the experience is just pretty much the same and it's pretty much on par with Surface Pro 4 and Surface Book. This is Clip Studio Paint and I'm using the inking tool. Look at the nice, well, inky lines. You, it's like you could do Chinese calligraphy with this. It's, it's very nice brush painting. Has palm rejection, of course. I can rest my hand on the screen. And I wouldn't want to be using that 50 pixel wide brush to be writing, but let's show you what writing looks like with a four pixel brush. It's perfectly fine for OneNote for you note takers and the usual amount of jitter. I'm not a slow drawer, but you'll have a little bit of jitter on lines that you draw diagonally if you draw them slowly. Keeps up pretty well here. I mean, you've got a powerful machine behind this. So it's not the engineering marvel that the Vio Z canvas was. That had a quad core in a tablet body with even more ports than this has. So, I mean, that still gets the ultimate wow for me. But for those of you who need a laptop too, and a lot of people do, this is still pretty darn incredible stuff. Again, and incredible costs a lot of money, apparently. The laptop has dual band Intel Wi-Fi, and to an AC Bluetooth 4.1 and stereo speakers on the bottom. Let's see how a video looks and sounds. We'll look at our Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Yoga Review. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and excitement. Hot off the presses at CES 2016, we have the 56. Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Yoga. 76 percent no carbon in this one even though this is based on the lenovo thinkpad x1 carbon one it sounds a bit thin and tinny but it's certainly plenty loud and for a machine this size it's, it's kind of par for the course in fact it's not any worse than the yoga that is in this review beautiful looking screen there though it really is a pleasure for content consumption certainly and it's also very good for media creation not only because you have the oomph of Intel Iris graphics and the faster CPU in there, but you put that together with this screen and it's nice stuff. Of course, you're paying a pretty penny for it too, aren't you? Now in terms of performance for this price, you better be getting something, huh? And you are. Here is our SSD score. That is very respectable and not all NVMe SSDs that we've seen so far have done that well. Again, this is the 512 gig SSD we have in here, but they all are the same kind of SSD. So we should expect to see fairly similar speeds. And here's our score in PC Mark 8 for the Home Accelerated Test, 3732. That is certainly going to beat any dual core Ultrabook. That's a very good number there. And here's our Cinebench score. I know Cinebench is really dark. It's kind of hard to see what that says there. But for Cinebench R15, the GPU test did 61.45 frames per second. Wow, that is really quite good. CPU scores 373, which is, again, better than an Ultrabook CPU there because it is higher wattage. But that, that GPU test result is very good. For Unigine Heaven 4, tessellation turned off 1920 by 1080 set to high, 17.2 frames per second. There it doesn't beat the NVIDIA 940M, but it's not that far off. The total score there is 433, and it can't report the temperature on an integrated GPU for us. Geekbench 3, 3779 for the single core. Very good single core score there. Multi-core, 7854. So in the current Skylake generation for a core i7 dual core of 15 watt, we would see usually 3000 and up to 7,000 for scores. So you get an idea that that is significantly stronger. W prime and computed in pi in 14.28 seconds versus 16 to 16.5 for a dual core Skylake CPU. Good stuff there. So how about battery life? It must stink, right? No, well, it, it, it actually doesn't. Now I would have liked to have had an extra couple of weeks to test the battery even thor more thoroughly. We only got this guy for a week. And this is a 58 watt hour battery that is nominally sealed inside. Again, you know, you're not supposed to disassemble it, but if you do, you could get access to the battery. It's a pretty large capacity battery for something this small and light because Vio says they use what they call their Z engine. That's their redesigned ever shrinking motherboard that allows for more room for the fans and for the battery or fan in this case. And you know, that's something that Sony previously was doing a lot of the same Sony engineers are with Vio now, just ever shrinking stuff. They're good at that. So it's pretty beefy battery. Now they claim 11 to 12 hours on this and we've been seeing around nine to 10. And that's with brightness set at 40% and doing productivity work and some streaming video. If you're working it hard, it's going to be shorter, obviously. So, Surprisingly, the battery life is actually pretty good on this.
Speaking of the fan, you don't really hear it, even if you're doing, I was working at Clip Studio Paint, for example, I was doing some work in Photoshop, the thing runs quiet, even when it's plugged in. Now, if you're doing something like running benchmarks, or you're playing games, or you're exporting 1080p video in Premiere Pro, you'll hear the fan, and it's a liquid bearing fan, so that means it's pretty quiet, which is nice, and it should have long life, too, so you'll hear it, and it's pretty, kind of, you know, it's a small fan, much as it has an interesting blade design to try to make it quiet. But what's wild about this is the minute you're done pushing it and doing a heavy workload, it just shuts off again. And so I watch the CPU temperatures on this, and they really do drop that quickly. The cooling system is very effective on this. Really impressed. Now the bottom is, again, carbon fiber, so that doesn't usually get too burning hot, Ed, but I haven't had any problems with this getting unpleasantly hot to the touch. All right, in case you're wondering how it does for gaming, a little Bioshock Infinite 1920 by 1080 on medium settings. Remember, this is uh, Intel Integrated Graphics, but it is the GT 550. And the frame rate is staying above 30. In fact, we've gone as high as 40 on medium settings. This is, this is really pretty neat stuff considering that there is no dedicated graphics in here. So there is just a little bit of Bioshock, so in case you're thinking about, well, playing some games on this, it certainly is a competitor to the Surface Book for being able to do some, some what I would still call, you know, lightweight to medium gaming here. So that's the Vio Z. No Sony in the name anymore, like I said. And it is certainly a lovely premium 13.3 inch Ultrabook with much more processing and graphics power than you would expect to see in something of this size. Of course, you might flip when you hear the price. Like I said, it is very expensive. This is obviously not going to be a high volume seller, but for those who really want the premium product here, need the, the, the pen feature and all that sort of thing, it's there. And they will, like I said, they said they're going to have a clamshell model also coming to the United States around $1,500. So if you don't need this whole flippy thing going on here, save yourself some money. You get pretty much the same idea, but sort of like the Vio Z evolved. Uh, it was discontinued about two years ago in the United States. And there's going to be a Vio S too, even lighter and more affordable too. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review and subscribe to our YouTube channel.